Hello Year 10 and welcome back to your next living room lesson. As you can see, I am dressed for the occasion today and you will find out very soon why I'm dressed like this. It's not just because it's still beautiful outside and I'm still stuck inside. Um, you will see in a moment. Um, so what you are going to need today, exercise book, pen and ruler, your phone and a scan of the textbook which will have been attached to your emails, okay? So it's time for me and Greta to get started. She should probably have some sunglasses on too though really, but hey ho. So, before we get into our actual lesson today, um, let's do our jog your memory as per usual. So three questions. What is a polyp? Give a natural cause for climate change. And what is a teleworker? Wow, a long time ago we did that, wasn't it? So pause your phones, scan the QR code and have a go at these three questions for me. OK, hopefully you've had a go at that. So. All is about to be revealed why I am dressed like this. So we've obviously been having a look at um, climate change for a while now, and we've been having a think about the causes of it, the general effects of it. And then last lesson, we were having a look at the impacts on an ecosystem such as a coral reef. But what we are doing today is we're coming on to look at the impacts it will have on a particular place. Now this particular place, the reason we look at it is because we have to look at somewhere that uh, has a somewhere which whose tourist industry, sorry, I couldn't get those words out there, whose tourist industry is going to be heavily affected. So let's see if we can work out where I'm off on my holidays today. So this place is in the Indian Ocean. It's made up of 1,190 islands. Most of those islands are uninhabited, so nobody lives on them. 80% of the land area is under one metre above sea level. Nowhere is above three metres. So all of these islands are very, very low. There is no high land on them. Has a population of 350,000. It's one of these places we don't even really think has a population because we only ever hear about people going on holiday there. It is made up of 26 atolls, which are coral islands. We'll have a look at what they are in a moment. The climate is warm, has a temperature range of between 24 and 33 degrees Celsius. Uh, it has warm, shallow waters with average water temperatures of between 30 and 32 degrees, so we know it's probably somewhere in the tropics. As a rich and complex coral reef ecosystem uh, with some of the highest levels of biodiversity on the planet. Here is an image of it. Hopefully you're all shouting at the videos now. I know where it is, Mr Smith. Yes, we are today having a look at the Maldives, uh, and we are having a think about how climate change is going to have had an impact on this small island nation of the Maldives, which, as I said, most of us only know for people going on holiday. So your title for today is The Effects of Climate Change on a Tourist Destination. Please, can you write that title in and underline it with a ruler? OK, good. So we'll start off just by having a bit of a think about where the Maldives is. So here's our world map and blink and you'd miss it. It's this little series of islands here. So what I'd like to do first is pause your videos and I'd like to go describing the location. I want you to be as geographical as possible. So we've obviously got something marked on here, this red line, what does that mean? We've also got oceans marked on here uh, and you could also make reference to uh, continents or countries if you would like, all right? So pause your phones now, have a look at this map and write a couple of bullet point descriptions about where the Maldives is. So hopefully you've gone down the lines of something like the Maldives is north of the equator, slightly north of the equator. Um, it is in the Indian Ocean. It is to the south of India or to the east of Africa. Um, hopefully you've put a few of those at bullet points. If not, please do. So first of all, we're just going to have a few a quick think about what makes the Maldives such a popular tourist destination. Now I know it's somewhere that I'd really like to go because it is very very pretty but there are lots of other reasons why people go to the Maldives for their holidays. So what I would like you to do first of all quite simply is I just want you to pause your videos now and I just want you to make a few notes maybe under a quick heading of what attracts tourists and make a few notes, probably just copy out the red bits maybe, that's the key facts you've got there. So take this information, condense it, and write down a few notes about what makes uh, the Maldives such a popular tourist destination. Okay, 
so the key bits on here coral reefs so they've got these unique coral reef ecosystems with lots of diving opportunities they've also got white sandy beaches um, and 70 percent of people going to the maldives go just for these white sandy beaches they do look pretty beautiful, don't they? I'm just going to tell you a quick story now as well, because why not? Um, one of my friends who I um, knew when I was training to be a teacher, she now teaches in Dubai. And just before lockdown happened, she was on holiday in the Maldives. Um, and they then announced that uh, lockdown was happening and no one could leave the Maldives. So she was stuck for three weeks in one of those beautiful Maldivian um, hotels that you see where it's all the like things over the ocean. She was stuck there for free for three weeks until they finally flew her home. Wouldn't there are uh, much worse places to be stuck, aren't there? Um, like my living room. Uh, so, as I mentioned, the Maldives is made up of a chain of coral atolls. Okay, so coral atolls are islands that are made of coral. They're usually surrounded by a shallow lagoon of water and circular coral reefs. So they're really, really low lying, okay? Um, so what I would like you to do is pause your videos, scan the QR code, watch this link, um, and make a copy of um, the key term of what an atoll is, all right? So watch the video and get this key term written down and highlight it for me. So, the Maldives, as we know already, relies really heavily on tourism. Loads of people go there, loads of people are attracted to it. But over recent years, over the last kind of 20, 30 years, the Maldivian economy has become really centred around all of that tourism that it gets. So, what I'd like you to do next is pause your videos, read through this information, and I want you in your books to draw a series of images, emojis, pictures, diagrams, whatever, feel creative, to summarise how the Maldives has benefited from tourism. So pause your videos now and have a go at that. So hopefully from reading that, you can see quite how important tourism is for a place like the Maldives. This bit's quite staggering, I think. 90% of all tax revenue is generated by tourism. So that's basically 90% of the whole income of that island is generated by people going on holiday to the Maldives. So that leaves just 10% generated for people doing normal day-to-day -day jobs that are not associated with the tourist industry. So as we can expect, the Maldives has become incredibly reliant on tourists going there. I can only imagine that throughout the uh, corona crisis, they are struggling hugely because obviously no tourists can go there. But we're not talking about that, we're talking about climate change. And we can only imagine, as we know they're really low-lying islands, that as climate change continues to happen and sea level rise continues to happen, we can guess what's going to be the impact on their economy. So next thing I want us to think about, a bit of a recap on stuff we've done before actually, because I want us to have a think about direct and indirect employment again. Okay. So remind yourself what you mean by what I mean by direct and indirect employment. You might want to look back through your books, find the Rugby World Cup stuff. And I would like to do a quick table um, with some examples of direct employment due to the tourist industry in the Maldives and indirect employment due to the tourist industry in the Maldives. So just a quick table, maybe three in each. So think about all of the people associated with tourism. Think about people who are directly employed by tourist industries and think about people who are inadvertently getting money and income from the tourist industry for your indirect one, obviously. Okay, so hopefully you've remembered that direct employment is jobs that have been created, especially because of the tourist industry, that if there was no tourist industry, those jobs would not exist. So that's things like hotel workers, or uh, air hostesses, uh, pilots, um, tour guides, those people would not have a job if there was no tourist industry. Whereas indirect jobs are jobs that would probably exist without tourism, but they benefit hugely because of it. So that would be things like cafes, cafe workers, um, scuba diver instructors, um, litter pickers maybe, all right? Now those jobs are all jobs that are created not necessarily because of tourism, but if there was no tourism, there'd probably be a lot less of those jobs and the people wouldn't be earning quite as much money about it. So a lot of the people, as we know, 90% of the rev tax revenue in the Maldives is from tourism. So a lot of people will be benefiting from either direct or indirect employment because of the tourist industry. OK, so what I want you to have a think about next is why is this good? Why is it great? We obviously know 90% of the tax income comes from tourists. That's really, really good. 
But there's obviously going to be some negatives of that. There's going to be some problems with the tourist industry being their kind of main focus of employment and the economy. So what I'd like to do quickly is pause the videos and make a copy of this table. So we've got advantages and disadvantages, and then we've broken it down into three different things. So we've got the local economy. Sorry, I completely misread that. The local people, uh, the local economy of the Maldives, and the local environment. So that natural coral reef environment. So quickly pause the videos and make a copy of this table. And then I'm going to give you the things you're writing in. So don't stop writing things in the boxes because I'm going to give you them, but you need to work out which box they go in, okay? Okay, so here are our six points that you are going to fit into your table. So I want you to pause your videos again, read through all six of these points and decide whether they're an advantage or a disadvantage and whether it's for the local people, the economy or the natural environment. Okay, so there's only one per box, so you just need to work out which one goes in which bit. Okay. Okay, let's go through these then. So... Advantages for the local people would be that it provides jobs in cafes, tour guides, hotels. However, a disadvantage are that these jobs are often very seasonal and low paid. So during the winter months, um, when people aren't travelling to the Maldives, um, those jobs aren't going to have as much employment, especially things like tour guides, for example. They're going to have real busy peak seasons when they're going to have loads and loads of work. And then they're going to have quite a few quiet months. Um, for the economy, advantages would be that it generates a huge amount of tax that the government are then using to invest back into the schools, the local infrastructure. Whereas a negative is that tourism is their main source of income. So if the tourism can't happen, such as during the corona crisis, um, they're not going to be getting any income. So the economy is going to suffer hugely at the moment. And for the local environment, um, money from the diving can then be put back into conservation projects. So the money that is made for all of these scuba diving trips will then be put back into protecting that coral reef. Because if they're not protecting the reef, people aren't going to go and scuba there. However, negatives are that um, these, these areas, these coral reefs, can often be damaged by the people visiting them, the tourists. They might take coral home with them. They might knock it with their flipper. Corals are really, really sensitive. So the slightest touch... Um, and they could completely die, all right? So the environment is being, whilst there are elements of it being quite well protected, it's actually being destroyed quite a bit as well because we know tourists are stupid. People are stupid. Okay, so in terms of, we've had a look at what, where the Maldives is, um, why it is such a popular tourist destination and what, why the Maldives might rely on its tourism. But what we're going to think about now is how this might change. And obviously we're thinking about it with our climate change hats on because we're thinking about how this change in climate might have an impact on a place like the Maldives. So the effects of sea level rise on the Maldives are that if there is a sea level rise of half a metre over the next kind of 80 years, 70% of the Maldives will be underwater. So if sea level rise continues to happen at the rate, at the rate it is happening, in 80 years time, 70% of the Maldives will be completely gone, completely underwater. If that sea level rise was to increase and it was to be of a metre over the next 80 years, the whole island would be gone before we even reach 80 years. By 2085, there would be no Maldives. It would be completely gone. So this amazing tropical paradise is at huge risk of climate change that give it 65 years, it might not be there anymore. It might cease to exist completely. So what I'd like to do very quickly is a quick heading of threat of climate change. Um, and I just want you to summarise these two bullet points, just so you have a reference of uh, how much sea level rise is going to impact the Maldives. OK, so we've spoken about what could happen in the future if climate change continues and sea level rise continues. However, over the last 30 years, the Maldives has been affected by climate change. There are already impacts occurring there which are having very negative impacts on the people. So what I want you to do is scan the QR code or click the link and go and watch this video, which summarises what's been going on over the last 30 years. And then I want you to add that to your last uh, bullet point list you were doing about the threats to the Maldives. So what threats are actually already happening? What's already going on there? So just a few brief notes from that video, okay? Okay, so we're going to keep thinking about 
the negative about the doom and gloom, the impacts that would happen to the Maldives if sea level rise continued. So what I want you to do next is copy out these three bullet points and I want you to put the words are in at the bottom here, and I want you to put the words into the correct gap. You might want to use the scan from the textbook to help you with this, or you might be all right. So pause your videos, read through these three bullet points, and put in the missing words for me. So nice and straightforward, I'll quickly go through the answers for, with you. So a seawall has been built to protect Marley, the capital city. Uh, this needs constant expensive repair. So they're already having to put things in place like building this seawall. But the seawall is being constantly battered by the storms that are hitting them all day. So it's costing them a lot of money already to protect it. Um, drinking water is in short supply as fresh water from the ground has been contaminated with salt and water. So they're already finding that as sea levels are rising, their water sources are not no longer able to be drunk from. So they're already having to ship in water, buy in water from other countries, which is obviously costing them money because their natural supply of water is being contaminated. Um, and rising sea levels will flood the beaches and ruin luxury hotels. So if it continues, those things that attract the tourists, the luxury hotels, the beaches, the reefs, will completely disappear. So I want you to uh, do this same sort of thing again, but this time it's what might happen in the future. So those were three things that have already happened to have an impact on the Maldives. Now we need to have to think about what is likely to happen over the future. So we've got four more bullet points here, um, and I want you to write out these four bullet points, and where your dot, dot, dots are, I want you to finish off those sentences. I want you to explain and elaborate those for me, so you've got four more future impacts. I'll talk through these now with you. So the tourist industry will be threatened by a rise in sea level because the luxury hotels, the beaches will be flooded. They'll disappear. There'll be no space for them. So the tourist industry is going to cease to exist if they haven't got the infrastructure for the tourists. The coral reefs will be threatened by a rise in sea level because coral reefs rely on shallow, warm water. And if the sea level gets higher, that water is going to become cooler which means the coral reefs uh, are no longer, longer going to be able to reproduce, they're not going to grow, they're not going to sustain. So the coral reefs could disappear completely. And the entire existence of the Republic of the Maldives as a nation will be threatened because their economy is going to be completely shot. They're not going to have an economy if there is no tourism industry, if there is no coral reefs. That's 90% of their income completely gone. So they would have to either completely rethink and reinvent themselves as a way to try and earn income or give up. Um, and lastly, Maldivians may become climate refugees as there is no longer enough land for them to live on. So the Maldives is often thought of to be the first place that is going to uh, create a huge number of climate refugees. People who have to leave their homes because climate has now meant their homes don't exist. So that is a whole population of 350,000 people who are no longer going to be able to live in the Maldives and will have to move somewhere else. So the future impacts are worrying. It's worrying what could happen to the Maldives if this was to continue. So there has been a few solutions to this. A few things are being thought of. I'll be honest, some of them are a bit wacky. They're a bit out there. So what I'd like you to do is, again, using that scan from the textbook, I want you to look at figure 33 and 34, which outlines two strategies. And in your books, I'd like you to describe what the strategy is. So just a brief sentence saying what this strategy is. Um, and then another sentence saying what the challenges might be, why this, why this strategy might be a bit difficult. Um, and if you want to push yourself, those of you with targets to seven to nine should definitely be doing this. I then want you to think about how sustainable that option actually is. Are they a sustainable long-term solution? Okay. You can also scan the QR code and watch this video, which will give you a little bit more on this. But by the end, you should have two strategies described and explaining what their challenges might be. And then some of you will be having whether they are sustainable or not. All right. So pause videos, go to the scan in the textbook and make some notes on this for me. Okay, so our two solutions were, the first, we'll start with the more sane one, um, is that in the long run, Maldivians are all going to have to relocate to Australia. Now, the Australian government have actually already said that they will accept all climate refugees from the Maldives because 
Australia um, are a country that don't have enough workers. That's why so many British people move to Australia um, and get jobs, because they are in desperate need of lots of workers. So they've said that Maldivians could move there. But obviously the challenges for that are is the Maldivians might not want to. They might not want to leave where they've been for, where their family's been for hundreds of years and the, the uh, kind of income, the economy that they have lived on for a really, really long time. So you're gonna have to convince them to move, but also, 350,000 people, you know, it sounds like quite a lot, but going to Australia, their population and the size of Australia, it's not going to have a massive impact on them, but they are going to have to put new infrastructure in place because we think that's a whole new population's worth of schools to build and healthcare. So the Australian government are also going to have to invest in it. So as to whether that is a sustainable solution, it could be if it's planned well. So if um, Maldivians bring some of their economy to Australia to help build that infrastructure, um, but there's going to be a lot of challenges with them. And then the other solution is the slightly bizarre one about building islands that float. So building these massive mechanical islands that as the sea level rises, the islands just go up a little bit, okay? And um, so obviously the challenges of that is it is hugely expensive and we don't necessarily know how safe it might be, okay? So there are some risks involved with it. Um, and in terms of sustainability, is it going to be that sustainable? Because they're going to have to constantly um, maintain these. It's going to cost a lot of money. If sea level rise speeds up, they're going to have to make them float higher. So it's going to cost more money again. I don't know if it's necessarily the best option, but it's, it's a option, isn't it? So that is it for the end today. Um, but what I'm going to leave you with is an eight mark question that I want some of you to have a go at. So the question is, the effects of climate change on the Maldives is a global problem. To what extent do you agree? So this is asking you, is the threat to the Maldives, is it just, is it just going to impact the people of the Maldives? Are they going to have to be the only people who put some effort and money into fixing it? Or actually, do we have a global responsibility to fix it? So those are your two sides of the argument. Um, so up to you whether you write this, plan this, completely ignore me, which I'm sure most of you will do, but it's really, really good practice for some of you. But what you are all going to be doing now is completing a quiz on Teams. So your teachers will be setting it in Teams assignments. They will explain how to access this, okay? So um, make sure you go and have a go at that quiz to recap what we've done in this lesson. So notes you should have in your book. You should have the location of the Maldives, the attractions of the Maldives, at all as a key term, Pictures and emojis of the tourism of how tourism impacts the Maldives, the effects of tourism table, threats to tourism, impacts of flooding, the future impacts, and then the solutions. So quite a lot in your books today, but I find it really interesting, this stuff, and I'm sure you all have as well. So, well done. Next time you see me, I won't look like such a wally. Uh, and keep being brilliant. Good stuff.